Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, we're comparing some micro four thirds lenses in terms of field of view, colors and contrast, and background separation. This will all be shot with the Panasonic GH6 for the main camera, and all of the coverage shots will be shot with the GH5 Mark II. So this entire video is shot on micro four thirds. I thought for those folks thinking about getting a G9 Mark II or any new Panasonic camera in the last few years, you might be wondering what the field of view looks like in comparison to other lenses. So that's what this video will cover. It will also cover the optical quality of each of these lenses, and you go back and forth and compare them at your leisure. Now this video is not sponsored. If you do enjoy it, please leave a thumbs up. I'll timestamp each section down in the description box below, and I'll talk about the results at the end of the video. Let's get into it. This is the Panasonic Leica 9mm f1.7 Prime, which has become my favorite compact small prime lens for the system. This lens is so good. This lens doesn't have any bells and whistles. There's no autofocus manual focus switch. There's no aperture ring or anything like that, like you'd find on the 15mm f1.7. But optically, this is great. The rectilinear design allows me to get straight lines in the shot, as opposed to that weird sort of fisheye distortion look, which I can't stand. So for me, this is great. And this is on the GH6 using autofocus, fingers crossed, it all works. Now I've tested this lens with the GH5 Mark II, the autofocus performance isn't quite as good as the GH6, unless you're shooting at 50 frames per second, then it sort of kicks into gear. So that's what we're doing in this video anyway, 50p just to be safe, and this is how it looks. And now you're looking at arguably the best video lens for micro four thirds. This is the Panasonic Leica 10 to 25 millimeter f1.7 zoom lens. That's right, a constant f1.7 zoom lens giving us a one millimeter tighter field of view on the wide end than that nine millimeter, but it allows us to go all the way in to 25 millimeters, which is that 50 millimeter equivalent. Anytime I put this lens on the camera, I'm always impressed with the end result. It has a real 3D pop for micro four thirds. It gives us a great looking image, whether we're at 10 millimeters, whether we're at 16, or whether we're at 25 and that constant f1.7 aperture means it's not going to get darker as we zoom in the light will stay constant which is fantastic this lens gives us the best aperture ring experience on any micro four thirds lens i'm at f16 watch what happens as i bring it all the way back up to f1.7 we've got the blurry background it looks beautiful and it's a really smooth experience. This lens also gives us a manual focus clutch instead of a manual focus on off switch on the side. I really like this and the manual focus experience is also very good. And while I'm using autofocus right now, if you are a manual focus shooter, you're going to love this lens. It will give you excellent results. And now we're over to my favorite travel lens for micro four thirds. This is the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter F2.8 constant zoom lens. So 12 to 35 millimeters is the equivalent of a 24 to 70. So this is slightly tighter on the wide angle, but it allows us to punch in way further, all the way to 35 millimeters, giving us that 70 millimeter field of view. And as you can see, you can get lots of nice blurry background with this lens at this particular focal length. There's a few reasons why this is my primary travel lens. I love the fact it's smaller and lighter than the 10 to 25 and having a constant f2.8 aperture is fantastic but it's also weather sealed and we get optical image stabilization. So yeah, it's a really compact lens. It gives you lots of versatility thanks to that awesome focal range. Check that out, man, 35 millimeters, awesome. And now you're looking at the 25 millimeter F1.7 prime at F1.7. Now we're in autofocus mode. This particular lens doesn't have anywhere near the same autofocus performance as all of the others in this list. So keep that in mind. I am using autofocus right now, but I just don't trust it even on the GH6, which has pretty decent contrast DFD. But this lens is my primary B-roll lens, 25 millimeters giving us that 50 millimeter field of view, allows us to get in nice and tight. The minimum focusing distance is also very good. It's just a great general photography lens as well. It does suffer from some focus breathing, which means you'll see the sides of frame kind of zoom in and out as I move in and back out of the frame. So. Yeah, it does have its flaws, but this is the least expensive lens for micro four thirds from Panasonic, at least to my knowledge as of right now. So this is why I own a few of them. If you're locking them off onto manual focus, you're going to get excellent results and you get a really nice blurry background. While this lens does have its shortcomings, it's by far my favorite inexpensive travel lens anytime I'm taking a prime lens with me. I love how small and light it is. If you take the lens hood off, it's super small. So yeah, great little lens. And again, you've been looking at all of the B-roll shot with this particular lens on my GH5 Mark II and the results look fantastic. And now you're looking at the Panasonic 42.5 millimeter F1.7 prime lens, giving us that 85 millimeter portrait field of view. This is great for seated interviews, for example, 
or if you're doing any sort of portrait photography. It's also great as a macro lens. You can get right up close to any object and get a really great magnification. So if you like doing close-up work, this is also a really great choice. Now, if you plan on locking this lens off for an interview in manual focus, the great news is you're gonna get a little more depth of field with this than the full frame equivalent, allowing you or the subject to move back and forth a little bit without losing everything to the shallow depth of field look. This gives us a lot more play and flexibility in manual focus, which is what I really like about it. You can create some really stunning background blur depending on where you are in the frame, but just know the autofocus experience with Contrast DFD isn't great, but it's very good when it comes to the G9 Mark II. It performs so well, it made me just laugh. If you've missed my autofocus test review video with that, I'll link it up in the cards. You can check it out after this video, but this is a really great lens for the right person. If you want a seated headshot in a studio, for example, or anything like that where it's a tight frame, you're going to get amazing results out of this lens. All right, let's wrap this video up. Just to let you know, I'm shooting on the GH6 with the 10 to 25 millimeter f1.7 zoom lens. In the studio, I can get my exact focal length that I would normally use for a prime, which is 35 millimeters on a full frame camera. So this allows me to get a really great look and still get a blurry background here in the studio. I'm just gonna talk quickly about the optical quality. So the Panasonic Leica lenses, including this 10 to 25, and this nine millimeter f1.7 looks so good. There's something that kind of happens with the contrast in these lenses that makes it really pop. The subject pops from the background. The overall image quality looks far superior to the other lenses, all of them. So I give the win to the Panasonic Leica lens. This nine millimeter, if you're looking for a wide field of view, is fantastic. It's maybe not the best when it comes to autofocus on contrast DFD or depth from defocus cameras. Like the GH6, I noticed more wobble with this lens than on any of the others with this camera, which is interesting. But just know if you own a G9 Mark II, all of these work well, so you won't have any problems whatsoever. Now, if you're just getting started and you've got a kit lens, for example, and you're looking to get more subject separation and background blur, I can highly recommend this 25 millimeter F1.7. This is the equivalent of the nifty 50 that people talk about for full frame cameras and allows you to get a nice creamy background. And it's quite sharp considering how inexpensive this lens is. I thought it held up pretty well up against the other lenses. It might not be optically that great when it comes to its bokeh compared to some of the other lenses. It's a little on the busy side, but overall it's a really great performer considering that this is only under a couple of hundred bucks, even in Australia, which is a really great deal. Let's talk about the 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8. Now minus the difference in the background blur compared to some of the other faster lenses, I actually really like how this looked. It has a slightly softer look to some of the other lenses, so it might not be quite as sharp, but that said, I still think it's plenty sharp, especially for micro four thirds. It doesn't seem to have an issue with sharpness overall, but that's just comparing this to some of the other lenses. But this is a really great travel lens. Again, it's weather sealed. You get that 24 to 70 equivalent. You get optical image stabilization if you're pairing this with a camera that also has dual IS. This is the best handheld lens you can get. I really love using this. I have no plans on moving this on. This 42.5 millimeter lens is a no brainer for portrait photographers or folks that want to capture a sit down interview, for example. This is definitely the way to go. Just know I had to walk quite a lot further back to frame my shot with this lens than all of the others. The nine millimeter I'm within arm's distance of. I can just touch the lens and have everything in focus. With this one, I had to take quite a number of steps back to still be in the shot. So yeah, you've got to be a bit further back with this lens, but it gives you excellent results. And again, it's quite a handy close-up lens thanks to the magnification. And lastly, the 10 to 25 millimeter lens is a great professional lens if you're a videographer. I think it really shines for video work. You know, that constant f1.7 aperture, the smooth aperture ring, as well as that manual focus clutch make it great. I thought the image quality paired beautifully with this nine millimeter f1.7. So if you're looking just for the wide end, I'd highly recommend this nine millimeter f1.7. It will save you a fortune over the 10 to 25. I'm using this lens here in the studio and it gives me a really professional look, but it wouldn't be my primary travel lens. If I'm traveling overseas and I wanna keep the size and weight down, I'm taking the 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 at the expense of image quality. The handling of this lens is a little bit better too. It's smaller, it's lighter, and if you're gonna be using it all day, the 12 to 35 is the way to go. But if you want the best in image quality, this 10 to 25 millimeter is by far my favorite. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up, leave all your comments and questions down below. And if you want to see another video similar to this with third party lenses, let us know in the comment section. Catch you soon. See ya.